Namaste everyone. Welcome to the Guruvayurappan Temple of Brampton, Canada's lecture series. My name is Sati Sudhakar and today it is the second in the series of lectures. And today's topic is, as you all know, Mysteries of Prana Revealed by Mrs. Jyoti Patel. It is an honor and pride for me to introduce my friend, as well as one of the group members of our Guru Arapan Temple study group, as well as a local Amarlo Gita study group. Uh, Jyoti Ji resides in Amarillo, Texas, and she is a pharmacist by profession. She has decided to take an early retirement and she is spending time with her family right now. She's married to Dr. Milan Patel, who is a practicing oncologist in Amarillo, and she has two grown up daughters. Even though I have known Jyoti Ji for the last 25 years, I never noticed her to be that keen on spiritual studies. But three years back, she joined our Amarillo Gita group and she became so fascinated by the Gita wisdom and several topics in uh, Sanatana Dharma like the Panchaprana and all. And she decided to uh, do an ex extensive research on several topics in the Sanatana Dharma. For her, the COVID-19 lockdown was a blessing in disguise. So she presented this topic in our group and we were all amazed at the extensive research she has done. And just like any speaker who brings several hours and hours of hard work and effort in front of the audience to make it palatable, just like the food coming to our table, here, Mrs. Jyoti Patel is ready with her treasure chest of information to share with all of us. Without further ado, let me hand it over to Jyoti Ji. Jyoti Ji, take over, please. Thank you, Sati Ji, for the great introduction. It's an honor for me to be here this evening, and thank you for the opportunity, Shaji Ji. I would like to start with a small prayer today. Om Gan Ganpate Namaha. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahano Bhunaktu. Sahaviryam Karvavahe. Tejas Vinavadhi Tamas Duma Vit Vishavahe. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. As we all know, today's topic is on prana and prana values. I will be talking about cosmic or mahaprana and individual prana values. To understand the meaning of prana, Swami Vivekananda explains beautifully in his work, according to him, at the beginning of the creation, there is only this Akasha, but by the power of prana, Akasha manufactured into this universe. So what is prana? Prana is the Sanskrit word for life force. Prana is the cosmic vibration that underlies all manifestations. Prana is the cause of all motion and life in both organic and inorganic world. Whenever there is the slightest expression of the motion, life or mind from the smallest atom up to the largest solar system and the highest man, it is the manifestation of all pervading force called prana. Vedanta teaches us that all the phenomena of the universe has evolved out of one eternal substance, which possesses prana 
or cosmic vital force, cosmic mind, cosmic intelligence, and consciousness. While scientists truly don't know why atoms move or vibrate, yogis say that it's because of prana. We are cosmic beings, so prana is that energy that connects us with the cosmos and enables us to be functioning living beings. It is the life force for all creations. This cosmic energy is also called Mahaprana or Mukhya Prana. When this energy enters the human body, it splits into different types of prana values. Depending on the functions they perform, and this division is called Vritti Bheda. So when it's flowing in the universe, it's called Mukhya Prana. But when it enters the body, it's called the Prana Vayus. So just like electricity, when it enters your house, it manifests differently depending on the function it performs. For example, light, fan, cooktop, heater, etc. These values influence the functioning of the body at the physical, physiological, mental, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual levels. The Mukhya Prana splits into five Pancha Pranas, five Upavayus, and two, two Paravayus, as you can see in this slide. The five Pancha Pranas are Prana, Apana, Samana, Udana, and Vyana. The five Upavayus are Naga, Kurma, Krikara, Devdata, and Dhananjaya. And the two important Parapranas are Akasha and Chitra. There are actually 49 Vayus in our body, but we will be talking only about 12 important ones. So before I go into individual pranas, I would like to talk about how prana is related to the soul or atman. The prana values enter the fetus during the fourth month in the womb, and this marks the first pranic movement in the body. And the soul enters the body with the prana. And as the prana leaves the body during death, so does the soul. The soul perceives the external world through, through prana. How? It's through our sense organs and action organs, the jnanindriyas and the karmindriyas. Prana is mandatory for all senses to function. According to the Hindu philosophy, prana is said to be the companion of the soul, but the soul is more subtle than prana. It lies in the heart center with the soul. The soul is the silent experiencer that perceives the physical world through prana and it enters and leaves the body with the prana. So let's move on to the five pranas. The first one I will talk about is the pranavayu. Pranavayu is called the air of respiration. Its flow is inwards and upwards, and its energy mostly pervades the heart, the lungs, and the head region. It is like the human resource center. It receives the prana from the external sources like air, food, drinks, information, sensory inputs, thoughts, and emotions. It is the fuel for the body, and it is responsible for nourishing the brain. Thought processes, applications of intelligence, and mind functions are governed by the prana vayu. It also creates expansion and contraction of the chest cavity and helps in breathing and saturating the body and cells with oxygen. It is associated with the anahata, anahata or the heart chakra and the element air. With the weakened pranavayu, you can get shortness of breath, coronary artery disease, cold, flu, lung issues like asthma, 
bronchitis, and also anxiety and fear. It is disturbed by loud noises, negative TV news, violent movies, and sad songs, and other things that cause negativity. You can strengthen it by silencing the mind, being in peaceful environments, and slow, deep breathing in and out. Pranayamas that help this prana are Nadi Shodhana, Bhastrika, and Ujjayi. Asanas that help are warrior pose, cobra pose, bridge pose, mountain pose, or any other poses that expands the chest or helps the upward flow of air. The next one is Apanavayu, and this is called the air of the colon. Its flow is downwards and outwards. It's situated in the pelvic and intestinal area. It is the energy of the muladhara or the root chakra and is associated with the element earth. At the physical level, it helps us get rid of all toxins, including carbon dioxide. This prana regulates excretion, menstruation, ejaculation, flatulence, perspiration, and childbirth. There are two other pranas that help apana prana in women. Prajabhatya prana helps hold the fetus in the womb and the sukita prana helps the delivery of the baby. At the mental level, it helps us eliminate all unwanted things from our mind, all the negative sensory, sensory emotional and mental experiences too. A weak apana prana creates the feelings of ungroundedness, weakness in the legs, fear, and doubt. One will keep or carry difficult or negative memories for a long time. And so forgiveness becomes difficult too. Physically, it will affect the intestines, the kidneys causing UTI, and also menstrual problems, reproductive issues, and constipation. This is the breathing technique that helps the apana prana. You breathe through the nose and exhale as if you feel the breath moving down through the legs and out the feet. Asanas that help are standing poses, seated forward folds, and seated twists. Pranayama that helps is Kapalbhati and Mulabandha or root lock and I will talk about the bandhas later on. A very important vayu is samana vayu, and it is the air of the stomach. This prana moves in a circular path from right to left and left to right, directed towards the center. It is situated in the navel or the abdomen area. It resides in the Manipura chakra or the solar plexus chakra, and it is associated with the fire element. On the physical level, it governs the digestion of food and drinks that we take in. At the mental level, it manages the processing and assimilation of information, ideas, and experiences. For example, if we don't learn from past experiences, and we keep making the same mistakes, it's due to a disrupted samana vayu. A disturbed samana pran also leads to issues with digestion, bloating, and lack of nutrient absorption. It also leads to poor judgment, low confidence, increased desires, lack of motivation, and even obesity. To strengthen the samana vayu, do asanas with core strengthening yoga poses or abdominal twisting poses and seated forward folds. Pranayamas that help are Kapalbhati and Surya breath, which is the right nostril breathing and Udhyana Bandha or the abdominal or navel lock. So let's take this to a different mental and spiritual levels. You have heard of Shravana, Manana, and Nidityasana. 
which is listening, contemplating the truth, and living the truth. Both digestion and assimilation of this concept inside your consciousness is also governed by Samana Vayu. So after ingestion, which is through the prana, digestion also has to happen at a mental, intellectual, and spiritual levels. The Brihadharanyaka Upanishad states that death does not come to one who increases the middle breath, which is Samana Vayu. So the yogis devised the practice of Kumbhaka or breath retention between inhalation and exhalation. For example, during alternate nostril breathing, Kumbhaka can be done. Here the diagram shows that if you inhale, an inhalation is called Puraka. If you, and you hold the breath, then you exhale and exhalation is called Richaka. You again hold the breath and you continue breathing like that, holding the breath after each inhalation and exhalation. What this does is that it brings the pranvayu down instead of going up and apana up instead of going down. What happens as a result is that prana intensifies in the navel area and to further intensify this pro process, yogis also used to include bandhas or locks in their pranayama practice. Now, before we go any further into bandhas, I would like to explain something called the granthis. There are three main nadis in our body, and they are Ida, Pingala, and Sushumna. Sushumna is the central channel which runs straight up the spinal cord and through each chakras. There are three granthis or knots that prevent the cosmic prana from moving up the Sushumna Nari from the Muladhara chakra to the Sahasara chakra during the Kundalini awakening. The granthis are called Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra. And they represent levels of awareness where the power of Maya, ignorance, and attachment to material things is especially strong. This aspirant must transcend these barriers to make a clear, clear passageway for the ascending Kundalini. Brahma Granthi functions in the region of Muladhara Chakra. It implies attachment to physical pleasures, material objects, and excessive selfishness. It also implies the ensnaring power of tamas, which is negativity, lethargy, and ignorance. Vishnu Granthi operates in the region of Anahata Chakra. It is associated with the bondage of emotional attachment and attachment to people and inner psychic visions. It is connected with rajas, which is the tendency towards passion, ambition, and assertiveness. Rudra Granthi functions in the region of Ajna Chakra. This phenomena and the concept of ourselves as, I'm sorry, it is associated with the attachment of Siddhis, psychic phenomena, and the concept of ourselves as individuals. One must surrender the sense of individual ego and transcend duality to make further spiritual practice. Coming back to bandhas, there are three types of locks. The first one is Jalandhara Bandha. And this lock brings the Pranvayu down to the Samana or the navel area. The Udhyana Bandha or the navel lock also called the abdominal lock. This Bandha creates tension in the core 
And when engaged, there is a natural upward flow of energy with compression that gives the necessary support to the abdominal organs and spine. On a subtle level, it fans the Agni or the element of fire that is most highly concentrated in the navel. Strengthening this fire aids in purifying the nadis or the channels in which the prana flows. I'm not going to go into detail since this is a topic by itself. In short, by practicing this ancient yogic method, you can collect and conserve the pranic energy in your Manipura chakra, which is your pranic storage battery powerhouse. Now there is the Mula Bandha, once engaged, brings the Apana up to the Samana or to the navel area. The Mahabandha or the Great Bandha is when all the three locks are combined and done together. So the next, the next Pancha Prana I'll be talking about is the Udana Vayu and it is the air of the throat. This prana flows all around in spirals going upwards. It is situated in the throat, neck and head area. It resides in the Vishuddha or throat chakra and is associated with the ether element. It governs the thyroid and parathyroid and therefore it affects the growth and metabolism. It also governs communication, speech and self-expression. It also regulates hearing because communication involves not only talking but listening too. It controls all types of communication including body language and sign language in mute, deaf or dumb people. Now it is responsible for the operation of all sense organs, the ears, eyes, nose, tongue and skin, and the functions of the brain. It gives us higher thinking and reasoning capabilities. This prana helps us with our intuitions and psychic abilities. So Udana is like the CEO of a company who makes strategic decisions and controls the entire operation of the system. Communication and spirituality are its specialty. It controls the intelligence and gives mental balance. When Udan is mastered by a yogi, he reaches higher levels of consciousness where he can control all the forces of the universe, mental and physical. He can walk on water, he can levitate and go against gravity. He can control body temperature and he can read your thoughts too. Such a yogi is free from hunger and thirst. This vayu, since it's located in the head region, affects the ajna and the sahasara chakras and it dominates the ananda maya kosha. Udana Shakti is activated in full force at the time of death when it can no longer sustain life. It literally withdraws the power of all the other values, especially Samana and Prana. And it propels the subtle bodies, the Manomaya Kosha, the Vijnana Maya Kosha and the Ananda Maya Kosha out of the Anna Maya Kosha or the gross body. After death, it leads the soul to the astral plane and the causal planes. Udana takes the mind into the state of sleep and deep sleep and into other death realms. It is responsible for astral travels and lucid dreaming too. It governs the movement of the Kundalini energy that we talked about earlier which is the cosmic prana up the Sushumna Nari. Once all the granthis are open, 
it is the udan that takes the energy of the sushumna nadi and we have already talked about this in detail it is the most important prana for spiritual growth now a weak udan leads to speech difficulties disturbances in sleep patterns an altered pain perception endocrine and thyroid problems lack of self expression communication issues and also emotional and mental stress a strong udan prana will ease the phase of death with a balanced udana you will be free of negative thoughts and you will be completely at peace and will have intuitive abilities and will be psychically active to strengthen udana the pranayama that helps are brahmari and ujjayi and the jalandhara bandha are done and asanas that help our head shoulder and fish poses so turning our attention to vyana vayu which is the air of circulation this prana flows throughout the body it moves outwards in a circular fashion it's called the omnipresent air because it pervades the whole body it sits at the sacral or the swadhisthana chakra and is related to the water element it is the energy of circulation and your blood arteries veins capillaries and lymphatic systems functions through vyana vayu all the electrical impulses sensory motor and neuronal impulses that go through the body to the brain and back are governed by vyana vayu it helps the movement of all pranas through the nadis it carries the nutrients helps muscle movement and creates goosebumps it also helps with the movement of thoughts and emotions and flights of imaginations truly vyana brings everything together a weak vyana leads to inflammation in the joints and lymphatic system and poor circulation emotional and nervous breakdown and muscle and skeletal issues mind and thoughts will not be free flow flowing if vyana does not function well it is a very fast flowing force for example when you are almost about to touch a hot pot your consciousness reaches the fingers immediately and you move your fingers this movement of consciousness is due to vyan vayu as it carries consciousness through the body too with a vya with with a weak vyana there will be uncontrolled thoughts meaning one remains in a deep state continuously and is not able to relate to the reality of the world certainly each prana contributes to overall balance of the body but without vyana vayu to coordinate them all balance is impossible just like an orchestra without its conductor the music just won't sound right similarly you don't feel normal unless vyan is well balanced nari shodhana surya namaskar meditation and overall yoga practice helps balance balance the vyan vayu so this brings us to the end of the pancha pranas and i would like to sum up the whole five pranas by giving a pancha prana analogy so think of your body as a machine prana vayu is bringing the fuel in the body samana is digesting that fuel apana is releasing the by products or the waste from this digestion and all the nutrients that has been generated by the machine transfers it all to the other body parts for functioning by the vyana vayu 
And the la last one, the sense of joy that comes from all these activities is carried to your higher chakras. And that joy is perceived and experienced by Udana Vayu. So let's move on to the five Upavayus or the minor Vayus. These control the involuntary action in our body. Therefore, we do not have much control over these pranas, but they can be influenced by the five major pranas through pranayama and yoga practice. Now, naga regulates burping, belching, hiccuping, and vomiting. Naga acts when you eat something bad or eat too much. It's also activated when the air element is agitated due to disturbances in diet and the digestive system. When there are disturbances in digestive system or excess air in the stomach, the prana, udana, and samana vayus are all disturbed, causing an activation of the naga prana. Kurma controls the opening, closing, and blinking of the eyes and also the dilation and constriction of the pupil. Udan Vayu has influence over Kurma. These pranas help in keeping the eyes moist and bright. A disturbed Kurma leads to uncontrolled blinking and twitching of the eyelids. When Kurma is balanced, one can perform Tratak med meditation, which is concentration, on a flame of a candle. And this increases the power of concentration and focus. Tratta also provides balance and strength to Kurma, as does chanting of Om. Krikara assists in sneezing and coughing reflex and control of hunger and thirst. Therefore, it is a very important vayu when you fast. It removes blockages from the respiratory system. And you should never control your sneeze or cough because it leads to an unbalanced krikara vayu. A balanced udan and prana helps keep krikara balanced too. Devdatta causes yawning which helps release air from the digestive tract. It balances Saman Vayu by expelling the gas after eating. Now this Vayu also generates the feeling of hunger and thirst. So you are supposed to eat only when hungry and drink only when thirsty. This way Devdatta helps in keeping the digestion healthy. Dhananjaya helps in opening and closing of the heart valves. It's an important prana because it helps Vyana control the circulation of blood. A disturbed Dhananjaya causes disturbances in heart functions. And Dhananjaya is also responsible for fainting, coma, and trance states. It is the only pran that does not leave even after death. It's last to leave the body since it helps in decomposition of the body. And this is the prana that enables organ transplant to occur, occur since it keeps the organs animated. The last of the two pranas I will be talking about are the two paravayus. Para means, para means which is higher. So these pranas enable us to think. That's what really makes us different from animals. The Paravayu helps control how your thoughts form and it influences your intelligence too. Now the first one is Akasha Vayu. Akasha means ether or in this case it can also mean thin air. Akasha is when thoughts when thoughts are downloaded from the ether element 
to a physical form. It's due to Akasha Prana. As an example could be that all of a sudden you think of chanting a mantra and you decide to chant Om because of its benefits and you physically sit down to chant it. And that's going from your Manomaya influenced by your Vigyana Maya Kosha to your Annamaya Kosha. And this process is called psychomental impulse. The other pra uh, Paraprana is Chitra Prana. This energy is exactly opposite of Akasha. In Akasha, thoughts come from ether element and is downloaded to the mental level and then to the physical level. Chitra uploads physical impulses to a mental plane. So it goes from the physical nervous system to a mental thought. An example could be a person drawing an image. Let's say he draws a threshold and a hand holding it. The first thing that you would think would be an image of Shiva. So here the impulse is going from Annamaya Kosha to Manomaya Kosha through Pranamaya Kosha. So these 12 pranas or energy flows enable us to be living beings and to be the best we can be, allowing us to perform all our functions, including our mental, intellectual, and spiritual tasks. So we have finished discussing all our prana values. I will move on to talk a little bit about some interesting facts about prana in general. Let's see how prana is related to Vastu Sastra. So why is prana or cosmic energy an important Vastu Sastra factor? According to Vastu Sastra, there are invisible energy lines that run like a large grid across the earth from north to south and from east to west. The electromagnetic field thus generated affects the human body at a cellular level and controls the organs of the human body. It is believed that when a structure is placed on earth, the equilibrium is affected because the physical structure causes a break in the electromagnetic field, which is the cosmic prana. Since equilibrium needs to be restored so that the cosmic prana flows harmoniously through the buildings as well as around it. It is surprising that the Vastu Pandits of ancient times knew of this life force. And so prana or the cosmic energy was considered an important Vastu factor and taken into account while designing buildings. One of the goals of Vastu in designing is to restore balance between the building structure and the cosmos. Because when buildings echo, the underlying cosmic principles, they vibrate in harmony with the universe. And this vibrations affects the inmates in a positive way, creating peace, prosperity, and contentment in their lives. One thing that really interested me was that the earth has prana too. The pattern of flow of prana in Mother Earth's subtle body is very similar to others, to our own. All the pranas in Mother Earth's subtle body are regulated and circulated in the air through a series of chakras, ducts, and nadis. There are seven main chakras around the world and there are other energy or higher prana centers called vortexes too. So here are the seven earth chakras around the world. The root chakra is Mount Shasta in California. 
and it's associated with the foundational strength, stability, and safety, as well as the stress response. The sacral chakra is in Lake Titicaca on the border of Bolivia and Peru. It's associated with the sexuality, emotional balance, self-respect, and creativity. The solar plexus chakra is in Uluru and the Olgas in Australia. It's associated with the energy, purpose, confidence, and a sense of inner power. The heart chakra of the earth is in Glastonbury and Shaftesbury, England. It's associated with love, compassion, giving, and forgiving. The throat chakra is at the Great Pyramids, Sphinx, and the Mount Olives in Egypt. It's associated with communication, self-expression, seeking, and speaking the truth. The third eye chakra doesn't have a fixed location. It moves around, and currently it is at Glastonbury and Shaftesbury, England. Associated with, it is associated with intuition, intelligence, and deep spiritual connection. The crown chakra is none other than our Mount Kailash in Tibet. As it is associated with the highest level of wisdom, understanding, divine guidance, and cosmic consciousness. So let's talk about how prana moves around in our body and how it's related to the chakras. Think of prana as your spiritual blood, sushumna as your spiritual, spiritual spinal cord, nadis as your spiritual veins, the chakras as your organs. Now prana travels through thousands of tiny channels called nadis to every cell of the body providing energy. There are 72,000 nadis in our body and they are equivalent to our arteries, veins and capillaries. Obviously it's not a physical thing, but it's a very subtle con concept. The only thing more subtle than prana is the soul. Prana is basically an energetic force. All these, including chakras and naris, are in the pranamaya kosha. Pranic passage is that predefined path in the pranamaya kosha in which these naris are maintaining the pran flow continuously. Chakras are where most of the prana is concentrated. But the three main channels where prana flows through are Ida, Pingala, and Sushumna. The chakras are located where the Ida and Pingala cross each other and intersect with the Sushumna Nari. The Ida is on the left and is related to the parasympathetic nervous system. The Pingala is on the right and it's related to the sympathetic nervous system. Next, I would like to talk about what happens to prana during death. Mukhya prana enters the fetus during the fourth month of conception, like I had said earlier, and it remains with that person throughout his life as per their karma, meaning everybody's prana is different depending on their karma. Prana is the link between the gross and astral body. And when the, thread, when the thread link of prana is cut, that is when death takes place. Now, those who live with a lot of pain and desires, their life force or prana leaves through the first chakra, that is the muladhara chakra, and they go to the lower realms. Since olden days, there is a process called Kapal Kriya, in which they break the skull to let the prana out of the head. 
the skull may not have completely burned during cremation. So to release the Dhananjaya, Dhananjaya Vayu, proper Kapal Kriya should be done. So whether burnt or buried, it is the Dhananjaya Vayu that is last to leave. The place where the soul and the prana leaves the body from the head is called Brahma Brahmarandra. And it opens at the time of death when the person, if the person has pr practiced taking the prana at a higher level in their life. If the mind is stable and focused at one point at the time when the prana is leaving the body, then the soul gets enough strength or energy to attain the highest realms. And the following is the timeline when the prana leaves the body to, during death. The samana leaves within 21 to 24 minutes and it maintains the body temperature because remember it is connected to the fire element in our body. Prana vayu leaves within 48 to 64 minutes. Udana leaves between 6 to 12 hours. Apana leaves between 8 to 18 hours. The Vyana leaves within 11 to 14 days. Only if the person has died a natural death due to old age. Otherwise, it will take 48 to 90 days if he or she has died an unnatural death. As per Prashna Upanishads, whatever are one's thoughts at the time of death, that thought remains with the prana. Prana coupled with Udana and the Atman leads to whatever world the person is thinking of at the time of death. Now, so much for death. <laughs> Let's see how we can boost and increase our prana and keep it healthy. The following are how you can maintain a healthy and balanced prana. You perform pranayama daily. Meditation helps keep, especially the udana vayu healthy, but it does help the other pranas too. Mantras especially Gayatri Mantra and Om, they represent the cosmic prana. In Gayatri Mantra, the sacred syllables of Gayatri contain the entire sound and form of prana shakti. Regular practice will help to harmonize and awaken the pranamaya kosha. And pranamaya kosha is where all the pranas are located. Chanting Om because the sound A, U, M contains the entire spectrum of the vibrations of the world. The vibration levels of all koshas, the Anandamaya kosha, Vigyanamaya kosha, Manomaya kosha and Pranamaya kosha are increased by chanting Om and the higher the vibrations or frequency, frequency, the greater the energy or prana. Other ways to increase prana is exercise regularly, get proper sleep and rest, eating higher vibrational or sattvic foods, outdoor activities. Sunlight is one of the best sources of prana. Prayers. And if you ask in a pray prayerful tone to feel and receive prana, the universe will bow down to your prana. Now laughter, positive thinking or gratitude also increases prana. Love, love is the highest and the most nourishing form of life force. And love is the frequency of the universe too. You can you should live your passions, do what you love, not because you are selfish, but being happy changes our pranic energy and increases its flow in our body.
releasing toxic relationships. Yes, that's true. Let, let go of relationships that bring your vibrations down. Yoga in all forms is a source of prana, acupuncture, reiki, pranic healing. All can also unblock the flow of prana. I would like to mention that the science of prana relating to the soul is called yoga and the science of prana relating to the gross body is called ayurveda each pancha prana also has its own mudras to help with their respective pranas yoga mudra is the science of redirecting energy flow in the entire body using hang, hand gestures through acupuncture, meridians, bringing your energy body to perfect alignment. When we move our fingers and hands in a specific manner, either we bend, cross, extend, or touch our fingers, we are actually altering the flow of prana through these acupuncture points which in turn influences and stimulates specific areas of the brain and helps in bringing an elemental balance in the body. Consistent practice of mudras can lead to overall well-being. Now there is an old Vedic story about prana in the Chandogya Upanishads. Once five main faculties of our body, the mind, breath, speech, hearing, and vision were arguing with each other as to which one of them was the best and most important. To resolve their dispute, they decided that each one should leave the body and see whose absence is most missed. First, speech left the body, but the body, though mute, continued to live. Next, the eyes left, though blind, continued to live. Next, the ears left, but the body, though deaf, continued to live. Then, the mind left, but the body, though unconscious, continued to live. Finally, the pran, the vital functions, one by one, began to leave and the body began to die. And all the other faculties began to lose their energy and functions. They all rushed to pran and told it to stay, accepting its supremacy. Clearly, pran won the argument. Pran gives energy or vitality to all our faculties of the body without which they cannot function. Control of the pran is very important to sustain our lives. Now on the cosmic level, there are two aspects of prana. The first is unmanifest, the energy of pure consciousness, which transcends all creations. The second or manifested prana is the force of creation itself. Practically speaking, it is difficult to differentiate between prana and consciousness. Consciousness is dormant and prana is active. Neither can exist or function without the other. Prana is an active force without knowledge and consciousness is knowledge without motion. So in Prasna Upanishad, it is stated that there are two aspects of being, prana and consciousness. These two aspects of cosmic energy represent two totally different forces in the cosmos and the human body. Consciousness in itself is inert, Prakriti as prana has the power of working, but not on its own. The union of purusha or spirit and prakriti matter results in action. 
prana is feminine and consciousness is masculine. Prana is Shakti and consciousness is Shiva. Without each other, they cannot exist. Prana and consciousness are separate ent entities existing in duality, but ultimately are opposite manifestations of the same force or prana. The power to create in the universe, which is resting in Shiva, is solely the outcome of this feminine Shakti. Om Shivoham. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. I truly appreciate your attention. I will try my best to answer any questions you have, but by no means I'm an expert. Thank you. Very good presentation. Thank you, Shaji ji. So now if you have any questions, uh, please uh, go ahead and ask uh, Jyoti ji. I guess one question is you mentioned soul enters fetus at four months of conception. I mean, is there uh, some theory backing this up? That is what I found in, uh, in the Upanishads. Oh, I see. So it's for Upanishad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody has any questions? I have one question. You were mentioning about the Earth Chakra. And you said there were seven geographical locations corresponding to the seven chakra points. How did you figure it out? Just out of curiosity. So this was just um, through my research, I found it out. And if you really um, go into different, because it has an electromagnetic field and that is basically energy and energy is prana. Okay, thank you. And, and also just to uh, expand on it, prana is in every little atom, whether it's living beings or non-living beings, even tables and chairs and everything has prana because it has atoms and atoms when they vibrate, that is what prana is. Thanks Jyotiji. I hope I, hope I answered your question. Yes, you did, thank you so much. Hi, uh, I have um, a question. Oh, 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 sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm Prana, just wondering, um, you mentioned that when prana enters the fetus, is there a particular prana that enters at first? And, you know, I mean, is there an order in which it enters? So it is the cosmic prana that enters and then it divides in, in the body. Once the cosmic prana enters, it divides itself into different, different, um, depending on the functions it produce uh, it depending on the functions uh it divides itself once it enters the body so it's not it's not like one enters the, after the other it's a cosmic prana that enters the main prana and then once in the body it will it will divide thank you Thanks. i have a question jyoti ji Sure. Okay, when the prana enters, you said the mukhya prana or the prana, uh, that is when you start breathing, right? The first, uh, I, then it divides into other pranas. How is it like? Well, when the child is in the womb, it doesn't breathe, right? No. The oxygen, it, according to modern medicine, okay. modern medicine, uh, modern, they say it takes the, uh, takes oxygen from the mother's blood, right? So it is a little bit of, uh, how does that work? Contradiction. Yeah, so um, until four months, it uses the mother's prana. And then yeah. around four months, when the main prana enters, it gets its own energy. 
mm. to function it, okay. as a baby. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Sure. I have a question, probably. Uh, this is Seish uh from Lubbock. Okay. Uh, thank you for your great presentation. I have a question here. In, uh, just now you said like uh, prana is present in everything, like including uh, inanimate objects, like what you're saying, chair and uh, whatever we see. So I'm kind of a little bit confused because we talk about Chit, Achit and Ishvara. So whenever everything is Achit, that means there is no Chaitanya or Prana there. So that's why, uh, you know, those three categories were made, right? So I thought like this, this is a little bit conflicting, like uh, having, you know, just because they have art atoms, uh, they have Prana in them. So um, I hope I can answer this, but because it has atoms, it has Prana, but it doesn't have consciousness. It is so, just like if you take, let's say you, you take ice and then the ice turns into water and then the air, the vibration changes. In solid particles, the vibration is so low that you don't see it. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Like say, for example, in solids, I guess the atoms are so close to each other, the vibration is so low. That's why it is more like what we call like tamasic nature in solid ab objects. So a little bit of loser in liquid, so more vibration of atoms. So, so you basically say that there is, uh, uh, it is different. Consciousness is different from prana, right? I thought like consciousness and prana are they basically, are they are together. No, they are like two different sides of the coin. Yes. Yeah. So, but yes. Yeah, yeah. You. Yeah. yeah okay. I got. I got it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I. We got to distinguish between consciousness and prana there. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Hello. Janikya Maburi here. Yeah. Okay. While doing meditation. Mm -hmm. How do you invoke cosmic energy either from the feet to the head or from head to feet? While doing meditation, we just sitting, we invoke the cosmic energy. Yes, you invoke cosmic energy. But I didn't, sorry, I didn't understand your question. See, while doing in med, sitting in meditation, we invoke the cosmic energy uh -huh. to enter into our body, either through feet or through head. No, it is not through feet. It is through your breath. Most of the time, it is through your breath. Okay, but we, imaginarily, we say that all the chakras are there. Now, when we invoke this cosmic energy to pass through these, these chakras, uh -huh. what is the direction of these chakras uh, orientation either through the lower chakra to higher chakra or higher chakra yes. to lower chakra. No, so it goes from Muladhara chakra upwards. Now, this is what you, we are talking about, the Kundalini awakening. Is that what you are asking me? Yes, yes. Yes, so it will go from the Muladhara chakra all the way up to the Sahasara chakra. So that means from down from feet towards to head. Well, it's in it's the pelvic area. It's not the feet. Yeah, that's right. Area yeah, to... right. Pelvic area. Uh -huh. Right. So that's what uh, while being in meditation, we okay. say the cosmic energy. We are invoking the cosmic energy. Yeah, mm -hmm. from of course we say from bottom, from pelvic area, or you call it from feet down right. to to the head. Like, right. Not okay. from the other way. Yes, because the kundalini energy or the cosmic prana that you're talking about, it's sitting in the muladhara chakra. Right. Okay. Which is called the sleeping serpent. Yeah. Okay. And once it, I just, uh, I wanted once, to verify yeah, once the it weekend, Then it will go up, 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 depending on your practice. It can come yeah. up to just only your prana, um, the heart chakra, and it can go back to depending yeah. on your practice. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. I hope you, I answered your question. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? If we are done with the questions, we will conclude our program. That was an awesome lecture, Jyoti Ji. You really enlightened us on this complex topic. And, uh, you know, you really did justice to the topic name, Unravel the Mysteries of Prana. You really explained everything in such detail. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadhguru. And, and on behalf of GTOB Canada, uh, I would like to thank you as well as the audience for attending. And uh, I would like to thank GTOB also for organizing this lecture series and the classes uh, that we are all a part of. Thank you so much. Let me conclude with a prayer. Oh, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyade, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnam Eva Vashishyate, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jyoti Ji. Thank you.